Here's a little bit about my past. Um, I started working on stuff for people on the side of an evening out of my parents' garage when I was about uh, 16 years old or so. And it finally got to the point where their driveway and everything was packed all the time. And so I uh, bought my first piece of commercial property, which is the little building. I was 20 years old when I started looking into getting the property, and I couldn't get a loan. It took me a year to get the property. When I was 21, I was finally able to get the property and started working out of it. These are all pictures of what it looked like when I first got it. And I've done a lot of work throughout the last five or six years because I'm 26 now. We added some barn metal in the front because I knew it was going to be like a fab shop area and I wanted something that would resist, have something to kick the sparks back if you're running grinders and stuff like that. So I lined the front of it in barn metal. I'm not a professional barn metal installer, so it doesn't look the best, but it works for what I needed it for. This was as I was framing up to put the little office in, which is where I started. Because when I originally bought the property, it was just to start a side business of an evening, and it ended up being a full-time gig after about a year of owning the property. So I ended up getting busier than... I could keep on top of and I was making more money of an evening doing it on the side than my full-time job so at that point I decided to go full-time and I also had some help throughout the ways like these shelves back here a good friend of mine helped me build them um, and then the little office my cousin helped me build it I can do carpentry work I grew up working on a farm with a local guy around here that also remodels houses and stuff and we did a lot of that growing up but I did all the electrical in it too. Um, I used to do a lot of wiring stuff. I even worked at Ray's as a welder fabricator for a short time. And I installed a lot of compactors and stuff too. Here's as the shop got a little more full after the shelves were built. Getting a little ceiling put in. Finally got some lights in there. And for the first year I had this building, I only had the front little bay, which was very tight. I could fit my truck in there just barely. I had to take the hitch out and I could just barely close the door. Now I've got a piranha in there and I can't even fit a vehicle, but I've got other bays so it's not as big of a deal. Here's when I got the windows in the office and did some painting. Here's when I started getting stuff moved into the front and getting it all lined out. Building some shelves and stuff. And in a, about a two year time frame, the building looks like the way it does now. It was a lot of long nights and a lot of hard work, but it's gone a long way. I've also moved the bathroom sideways. You'll see in some later pictures here how the bathroom's been tore down and moved sideways. This is when I got my first toolbox nestled in there. Hung up some of my vintage oil cans and stuff. When I first started working for myself full time, this is what the back of the shop looked like. It was all grass. I did engine swaps out there. And you just got to do what you got to do. Snowing, raining, it didn't matter. I worked on everything outside just about. This was doing an engine swap on that truck. I did get a little more sophisticated and bought a lift and used it outside for quite a while. It worked out really nice. And there were all these old stumps and this old concrete pads that were all broken, junky looking. I dug all that out and packed it in every two inches. And I got... A hold of some people in town that were pouring some garage floors so I talked to the guy that was doing the concrete work and asked him for leftovers and I'd done concrete work in the past so I just asked him what he was doing with the leftovers and he gave me all the leftovers so I just went ahead and formed everything up in case I had enough and I got real lucky I was able to use all the leftovers and put a sidewalk in down the side of the shop and it didn't cost me anything and the guy was nice enough to let me use his packer plate so I was able to actually compact all the stone that I put in. And it turned out really, really nice. This was uh, day one, pour one. This is what was left over the first garage. This is day two of it. And uh, I borrowed a gas screeder from the farmer guy that I used to work for. We used to do sidewalks and stuff too. And I knew he had one so I just borrowed it from him made it a lot easier. 
and that's what it looked like when it was setting up. Now it's got pallet racking on it, but it turned out pretty nice. And my uncle wanted to help me out, so he came over and power washed off my building for me and painted everything. He's got a big paintless sprayer thing. He came over and painted the whole building. It looked really nice. And every fall I still go out to the farm and help when I need to. This was the back wall in the little building that I had originally bought, the first building I had bought. We stripped the inside of it, and it was like this for a long time, and I was just getting up the courage to knock a hole in it, and one night, my buddy stopped by. I was like, let's just knock a hole in it, and I was like, well, I don't know about that, and next thing I know, he's got a sledgehammer through the wall, and there's a big hole, and I was like, okay, I guess we're going for it, so we just kind of went for it, and by 2 o'clock that morning, we had uh, everything framed in and temporary. And that's what it looked like the first night, just so we could go home. But we put that steel I-beam in. We ended up taking it back down. I took a plasma cutter and put a bunch of holes in it and lined both sides with tuba sixes. And that way we could fasten stuff to it. And we built better posts for the end corners. These were my temporary doors that we used for a little while. Uh, and this is when I finally spun the bathroom sideways and put it in. This is when I... We finally got it all scabbed in and looking pretty decent. Then we finally furred the walls out at a later date. This is when we put the garage door in. And I got some more free concrete. So they were doing a project here in town. And I talked to the contractors that were doing the stuff. And asked them if, what they were doing with their leftover concrete. And they gave it to me. So I framed, or formed everything up in the back. I ended up getting about 13 yards of concrete for free because it didn't meet their requirements that it had to be for whatever reason. But for free concrete, I'm not going to complain. It's about 13 inches deep in most places. And I didn't have enough to come all the way out to the end, so that's kind of where it stopped. But I'm pretty happy with everything because now i got a spot out back where I can pull a car up there. I can use jack and jack stands. It's pretty awesome. And after about two years of being on my own I finally become a Napa Auto Care Center and that was uh well it may have been only a year because I think it was 2016 is when I become an auto care center and I I had that for a year two years or so I gave it up last year I just didn't really see a need for it anymore and here's what the outside of that building looked like when I originally bought it too it was in pretty bad shape. I actually cut all the trees and stuff down. I kind of forgot about these pictures. And here's the two post lift that I eventually bought for that building. It's still got it in it now. I've made a top bar for the top of it. So close to when I first started, this is how I used to move cars around. I bought two farm all cubs and I made this push plate for the back of it with tires so I could back up, have somebody in a vehicle and steer it and I could push it around. I built a... Uh, took a hitch for a truck and welded a piece of three inch schedule 80 steel pipe to the center of it and used a bumper jack with it to uh, pick a vehicle up off the back and then I could pick it up and take all four wheels off of it outside and it made it very handy. I was doing brake lines on this truck. This is why I still had the lift in the front of that building but it looked a whole lot better than when I first got it. That's with the pallet racking in the background and stuff. That was before I bought the big building that I'm in now. This is a uh, Duramax tool that uh, I needed on a Sunday and didn't have it, so I ended up making one. I know the tool is only $20, but I needed it and nobody had it, so I just built one, and I still use it to this day. It works great. We were After I got the Piranha, we were getting ready to do a bunch of fab work, and I didn't have a catch tray for all my scrap steel on the back of it. So I had some 16 gauge and I was going to build a catch tray. Well, my brake on it wasn't big enough, so I built a press brake that bolted in the bench vise. And this is the aftermath of it. That's 2 by 2 3 8 angle that I'm using for the brake part of it. And I made it so it bolted on and off of the vise. So I can still use the vise, but I can also bolt it back up there and use it as a press brake. And this is what my test piece looked like after I first made it. It does a really nice job. And here's the finished product of why I need it to make it for. I built a catch tray, and I also had feet on it that I had adjustable feet on, so if, no matter where I ever moved that piranha to, I could adjust the table out so it sits level. Because this is the mess it would leave before. And that's after we built the catch tray. 
I was working on this lawnmower and needed to pull the rear end out and didn't have a real good way to grab a hold of it. So I took some angle and uh, built me a center pick eye to slide my lift post to grab stuff. That's half inch plate and I punched an inch and an eighth hole with that piranha in it and welded it in in the center. Now this is the start of when I got the big building. So I think I'm gonna cut it here and make a part two next Thursday for Throwback Thursday.